Hey y'all, I just want to preface this video by saying that while I was making it, a similar video by Cell Specs came out that made a lot of the same points that I'm about to, but in a much more clinical manner. I went back and forth for a while on whether I should finish it because I hate unfounded accusations of plagiarism as much as the next girl, but honestly, I have a two to three video a month quota to keep and my therapist isn't going to pay herself. So yeah, go watch that video if you haven't. It's actually really good and try not to think too horribly of me. Have you guys seen Soul? You probably have. It's a Pixar movie. Either you've seen it or half your friends have. And if your friends have, then you've already had that one friend in your group talking about how it's a totally grown-up film that's mature and deep and totally not for kids. And you've probably strangled that friend, dumped their body in the ocean, and fled to Greenland under the pseudonym of Andrea S., and retired to a quiet life in the cold rural town selling turnips at a very modest price. No? Just me then? Okay. I don't know anyone who hates Pixar films. Even if you're not into animated films, you probably don't hate Pixar. I mean, even the worst Pixar film is a pretty good movie. In my opinion, at least, Coco was fine, I liked it. The point is that Pixar has never made a genuinely bad film, and their best films, like Toy Story or Cars 2, are some of the most well-loved works of art in history. So many people are gonna take that seriously, oh my god. But there's always been one issue plaguing Pixar over the last few years, and that's the fact that they're slightly more intellectually deep than a spoon, and as a result, every single time a Pixar film comes out, there's a predictable cycle of older millennials declaring them to be too deep for kids and holding them up as proof that animation can be for adults and oh my god my brain is literally melting on the spot. It has never stopped, it is never going to stop, and my attempts to make it stop is futile and I'm going to die an unhappy woman. It's no secret I've always found it irritating whenever a children's film comes out with even the slightest amount of emotional weight to it, and my fellow millennials go, Wow, this isn't for kids. I cannot stress how badly I want to fucking strangle you when you say that. Greenland, guys. Fucking Greenland. There's this almost cognitive dissonance where we'll deride things like Teen Titans Go for being too kiddy, with people often claiming that kids' media needs to be more enriching, but the moment it actually does that, a lot of those same people will try and claim it for themselves. Of course, what people actually mean is that it isn't for three-year-olds, and they completely forget about the large gulf that the word kid actually encompasses, as if there were no gradation between Dora the Explorer and Family Guy, or Family Guy for conservatives, or Family Guy for stem lords, or Family Guy for your emotionally abusive narcissistic ex or Family Guy for- okay, I'll stop now. And it's a shame that people keep doing this with Pixar of all things, because Pixar has always been palatable to a large variety of audiences, from really little kids to older kids to the parents stuck in the theater with them. Now, yes, oftentimes Pixar films have much more to them than an adult can find engaging, which might fly right over a child's head, but that doesn't mean it's completely impenetrable to them. Inside Out was where I started really thinking about this, because there was the usual group of people saying it was too intense and melancholy for kids, and that the themes of depression and sadness were inappropriate. This was almost in spite of the fact that all of this was happening to an 11 year old in the film. We watch this actual, literal child have her feelings invalidated, struggle to keep her sadness buried, and then have a grief-induced nervous breakdown which results in an impulsive decision that she only barely manages to get out of at the last second. And then you see a bunch of very serious people claim that this isn't a movie for children, as if children somehow don't experience the very real emotions depicted on screen, which always just struck me as no different from parents, teachers, and other adults dismissing the very real emotions of very real children for no other reason than to avoid thinking about how their actions affect others. For all the talk about Inside Out flying over the heads of kids, the main central message to parents in the audience that your children have feelings and are affected by trauma and you need to take that seriously flew completely over their heads. Most of what happens in the story is a direct result of Riley's mother putting pressure on her to swallow her feelings and act like everything is okay for her father's benefit, putting an absurd emotional burden on a child that no parent ever should, and how Riley's attempts to bury her sadness and by extension joy doing the same thing by fucking around with her head only does further damage to her in the long run. And it's especially irritating that Soul did this a second time, only more brazenly in your face about it, and somehow it still didn't get through their heads. The thing about Soul is that the vast majority of the film is dedicated to its second protagonist, 22, a nihilistic newborn soul who's been at the great before for millennia and been unable to find her spark, which many of the characters interpret as a purpose in life. But in reality, the spark is just the will to live. 22 embodies a very juvenile behavior. We all go through a phase where we think we have everything figured out and we're smarter than everyone else, and part of the reason she's like this is because she's had a string of terrible mentors who couldn't ignite that spark inside of her because she didn't immediately behave the way they wanted her to. I don't know how many nihilistic teenagers you know, but speaking as 
as someone who's not only met kids like that, but was a kid like that, there's a general running trend of the educational system where child services failing them. And one of the reasons that they and I slipped into this belief that society is rotten to the core and only we can see through the facade is because it's more reassuring than the reality that not only is the system flat out not equipped to handle their divergent kids, but that even if you aren't, you have no real control over your life and you can pretty much be fucked over based on the whims of a few fallible human beings. From our first breath to our last, every decision is made for us. Parents and teachers have a disproportionate amount of influence and control over a child's life, and the system is generally not kind to a child's feelings, and the fact of the matter is that they have too much control. Decisions can be made on a child or teenager's behalf without ever once talking to that teenager, and the people directly in charge of their life are simply too fallible to be trusted without oversight. This is reflected in the film. The Jerry's hand 22 over to a succession of famous individuals like Gandhi, Copernicus, Lincoln, Marie Antoinette, Carl Jung, Mother Teresa, Muhammad Ali, and George Orwell and that's just the ones that were named. And the interesting thing about all of them is that if you do even 10 minutes of research, they were all questionable individuals who, at first glance, seemed like important figures in history, but were more often than not colored very differently later in life by a changing world, or, in the case of Gandhi, was actually virulently anti-Semitic and a literal pedophile. And based entirely off the clips shown of 22, the worst thing she ever did to them was bruise their ego and cause them to lash out at her. 22 is ultimately labeled as a troublemaker, but she didn't go that route of her own volition. And this is ultimately a big problem for children and teenagers alike. It puts the blame on 22 to absolve her mentors of any wrongdoing, to just label her a troublemaker or a lost cause and not think about the fact that they are the reason she is like this. It's more comfortable. 22 herself only sinks into disaffected nihilism to hide the fact that she's extremely hurt by everything her mentors have said. What she's been put through is borderline abuse, and one thing a lot of abuse victims will do is put on a mask to avoid showing weakness because they fear that weakness being used to further exploit them. Better people think you're hopeless and beyond help so they won't know how to hurt you you in worse ways. And it's ultimately coming close to getting that spark of life and having everything that got her there invalidated and dismissed by Joe that causes her to break down completely and just give up. And not just give up, but slip completely into hopeless despair. This is what millennia of bad mentors giving up on her and the Jerry's just shrugging their shoulders and washing their hands of 22 has done. The system has failed her at every possible opportunity. Look at that and tell me this is not a film for kids. Because this film not only presents a situation that resonates with children, but also looks their parents dead in the fucking eye as it's delivering this theme. Because this isn't just a twee little concept that Pixar made up, it happens every fucking day. The school system does not handle neurodiverging kids very well. A lot of parents can't handle them very well. And it's not because they can't. Funding can be given for these things, and parents can be educated. It's just that more often than not, they would prefer not to bother. This is the only reason children are labeled troublemakers and discipline problems. The system can be adapted to help these kids, but the people in charge would rather make excuses to not have to try, because trying would require accepting that you didn't know best, which has always been the biggest bugbear in regards to any system that revolves around childcare. For whatever reason, there is a large subset of people who can be completely fine and upstanding citizens, but the moment you put a child in their care, it's like all hell's broken loose, and they turn into some of the most vindictive fucking narcissist in the goddamn world. The moment you give some people authority, they immediately start abusing it. But apparently that all flew over people's heads because of fucking course it did, because the people making this claim that the latest Pixar film isn't for kids completely missed all of that and just fixated on the part where death is involved and Joe having a midlife crisis and all the focus on jazz, and they forgot about the part where Joe and 22 are both protagonists who have fully realized character arcs. Joe learns that there's more to life than his obsession with jazz and to fully appreciate the little things that make life worth living. And yeah, that's a little esoteric, and out there for kids, but it's not the only story in there. It never has been. Like, how many fucking movies with undertones of parents or caregivers failing the children in their care, either in the plot or backstory, does Pixar have to make before you finally stop trying to seize these films as actually mature animation for adults no babies allowed? Pixar films have always been, and will always continue to be, for children and for the benefit of children. It's what makes them such successful and talented filmmakers, and what makes 
makes their film so beloved. And that's not to say that Pixar has never misstepped. They once literally slandered an entire profession and paved the way for brainless, self-absorbed, anti-negativity, anti-criticism backlash, the effects of which we're still feeling to this very fucking day. Their approach to female character design indicates they definitely need a purge of all the perverts in the fucking studio, or at the very least pay a single woman to walk around the office hitting every single male co-worker with a big stick. But this notion that their films aren't really for kids that uh, comes out every single fucking time they make a film really needs to fucking die, because Pixar is the prime example of why animation needs to remain inclusive to children, regardless of what aging millennials would prefer. I've been sitting here for a while trying to think of a way to wrap up my thoughts on Soul, and honestly, I kind of just want to be blunt to the people for whom this video is directed at. Like, if you're someone who looks at these films, and Soul in particular, as not really for kids, shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. I am so fucking sick and tired of you trying to snatch up things meant primarily for the benefit of children and claiming them as belonging only to you so that you don't have to confront your own fucking mortality and accept the reality that you actually have to share the world with children. No, no, stop. Don't give me a big lecture about a child's brain power or complex themes that are inappropriate for children, because y'all think killing a villain is inappropriate for children when it never was. Y'all pulled this same shit with My Little Pony and steadily turned a franchise that was predominantly for children into a cesspit of edgy adolescent garbage and actual, literal, fucking grooming. You don't have a fucking leg to stand on here. You are just so incredibly socially maladjusted that you're having a fucking midlife crisis in your 20s. Just shut the fuck up. Fuck up.